I'm here today to respond to some of the information or misinformation uh, Mark McCann has put on YouTube with regards to the electric cars and the electric car industry. I'm a massive fan of Mark, I am a subscriber, I do watch all of his videos and his content is really good. So if you're not sure who Mark McCann is, have a look in my description, I have put a link to his channel, he's well worth subscribing to and well worth watching. However, this time I feel compelled to upload this video because I felt there's a lot of misinformation with regards to his report on electric cars. It starts off with his thumbnail where it shows a Tesla charging in a Tesla supercharger and his headline is £150 to go 200 miles. That's absolute rubbish. That doesn't happen with a Tesla on a Tesla charger. It's significantly cheaper than that, 10 times cheaper if you're charging your car. He then talks about cobalt being used in batteries for electric cars and talks about the mining of them and the exploitation of people. Yes, the mining and the exploitation of people, yeah, he's quite right, there's a lot of bad practices, but come on, let's look at the fuel industry. That's not exactly squeaky clean. And as of now, most electric cars run on LFP batteries, which don't actually have cobalt in them. So he's not right on that one there. And the thing is with something like cobalt being used in a battery, it's also used in uh, petrol. So when you refine petrol, you do use that as well. It's also used in your smartphones. And with any mineral, it can be recycled, unlike fuel. He then challenges, is an electric car good for the planet? Now, I'm in the, I suppose you would call me a climate denier. I don't believe in climate change. There is a climate change in the fact that it's a natural climate change. It's been going on for the past 20,000 years since the ice age. However, this is not about being green. It's about poisonous gases a petrol car emits from its exhaust. The question I will put to Mark, and this is why we're having electric cars. If you had a choice of putting your lovely family into a room, unventilated room, with one of your V8 cars running for the next 10 hours, or put them in an unventilated room with an electric car running, what are you gonna do? I know the answer, you know the answer. You're gonna put them in with the electric car because it's not gonna poison them. And this is the reason why the government are trying to push us all into electric cars because they don't want the poisonous gases which obviously has uh, drastic effects to people with asthma and other health conditions and if you've ever been to anywhere like Asia, gone to Bangkok on a hot sunny day and the smog is there, it's, it's, it's absolutely horrendous. You can't breathe, you're coughing, your eyes are stinning and that's why we're going to electric cars. It's not about saving the planet, in my opinion. It's about stopping those poisonous fumes going into our kids' lungs around towns and in cities. It's simple as that. I agree with what he's saying about the government incentives. I don't believe they should be there. The product should be good enough to make people want to buy it. And that's having infrastructure. That's having cars that have the range. I don't believe us taxpayers should be funding people's electric cars. I'm, I'm in complete agreement with him on that one. Mark then goes on about car tax and how electric car owners are being subsidised by petrol car owners uh, for road tax. Yes, that was the case. There was an incentive where you either pay £10 or no road tax at all. But that's all coming to a change now with more and more electric cars coming online. And for someone like me, I drive one of those white Teslas Mark goes on about. And yes, I'm going to be paying £150 a year from next year for my road tax. So the government are bringing back the revenues uh, for electric cars to be in line with petrol cars. He does speak rightly about choice. And again, I did uh, mention that earlier. We shouldn't be forcing people out of petrol cars into electric cars. The product's got to be good and you've got to make people want to own an electric car or have it as a second car and have a petrol car. I don't believe we should be forcing people 
in 2035 into buying electric only because it doesn't work for everybody. When he talks to the electrician about charging points, again, I think this is not factually correct. Uh, he highlighted Octopus and it, it made it look like Octopus Energy were undercutting these installers, these electricians to get the charges into people's property. That's not correct because when I had my electric point installed, it worked out cheaper going to a qualified electrician, an EV installer, than it was to go to, at the time it was, I think it was Ovo Energy who were going to install my uh, charger. It worked out much more expensive. So I ended up using a local electrician and he done a fantastic job. And with regards to what Octopus charged, the average installation of an EV charger in your home with Octopus, a simple one, you're looking at £899. You can get that cheaper with a qualified electrician and supplying either your own charger or getting one through them. So, sorry Mark, that's not factually correct. He then has this guy, I, I found him quite amusing, where he was telling you about the electricity suppliers supplying you these boxes and they're going to be snooping on your information, looking at your data, finding out when your kettle's turned on. That's already there with smart meters. They've got all that information already. And don't you think when you're using something like a loyalty card or you're using your mobile phone, using your smart TV, your data's being taken all the time. The only information o Ovo or Octopus, etc., want to use is get your charging history to get your charging pattern so it can supply your electricity at a cheap time for you. And this is the thing is, I pay £20 a month for my electric and that's it. I signed up early to Octopus and basically they were offering for the first 8,888 people charging for £20 a month. They've got another one in place now called Intelligent Drive. I'll put the link in the description if you're interested. Again, £30 a month. That's all your electric. Now I drive my Tesla as a taxi. I was putting 70 to 100 pound a week in fuel. I now put 20 pound a month in, five pound a week. It's a no brainer for me, but I will accept doesn't work for everybody. He talks about people who are unable to charge at home uh, because they haven't got to drive, they've got no off-road parking. And he is right, that is a problem for EV charging. And there is, however, and he doesn't mention this, he talks about cables drooping over the wall, people with massive extension leads, etc. That's not needed anymore. There's a lot of councils who are offering grants for people to have channels put outside their home where the electric cable can go so they can charge their car safely. Now, the big problem with that is what happens if somebody parks in your space? So yeah, there is lots of things to iron out with that and he's quite right. And I will say this, and I say this to people when they ask me about my Tesla, is would you go back to petrol? No. But if I couldn't park and charge off-road or I didn't have home charging, I wouldn't touch an electric car. So Mark's quite right in that instance in terms of electric cars do not fit everybody at this moment in time. The next one, which is, again, it's, it's scaremongering people with electric. He goes and takes it to one of the worst charging stations with a Tesla, Instavolt, who absolutely rip you off at 88 pence a kilowatt, whatever it was, or 85p a kilowatt hour. Tesla charges you 35 pence. And the thing is, is most electric car owners do not need to use chargers. As I said earlier, I use mine as a taxi. When I looked at my stats uh, for my car, I used 2% charging over the course of a year on a supercharger. And He's quite right in terms of the costing, because if Tesla can charge your car at 35 pence a kilowatt hour, and Instavolt are charging you 85 pence, there is a big rip off. There is a big rip off in that, and he's quite right to highlight the cost of public charging. He then does a comparison where he puts a small little Volkswagen Golf up against a Tesla on the most expensive charger you could use. And it's just not factually, balance 
He was saying fuel costs have plummeted 50% whilst electric's gone up. Yes, electric has gone up, but then you're using a comparison of around the time of COVID when fuel was nearly two pound a litre. Of course it's gone down because obviously the supply and demand's changed over those years. So I think it leads to a biased form of scaremongering to people who are rightly concerned about switching from a petrol car to electric. I've done a lot of research myself before I purchased my Tesla to see if it was going to be right for me. He then highlights Matt Armstrong, again another great YouTuber, and talks about the battery which is basically a brick at the moment, uh, which came from his crash damaged Lamborghini. Now it's not the battery that's at fault there, the battery is perfectly fine, it works perfectly fine. It's the software and the fault sits with Lamborghini. Nothing to do with EVs, nothing to do with EV batteries. That is a purely Lamborghini problem where they've not dealt, done their software updates or put software in place to re-energize re the battery and, and get it working. But once they do, Matt Armstrong sat on a battery which he can go and sell on. He then talks about electric batteries not being recycled. Again, that's not correct. There's a lot of people now who are using EV batteries and putting them in as power walls to supply cheap electricity to the battery and then feed it back into their house. Uh, there's a high demand for batteries that have come out of crash damaged Teslas as they get taken out and they get reused. So again, a little bit more misinformation there. So in conclusion to the video, I think it was very biased and it fed into the fear mongering of people who are scared of switching to EV. He's quite right, the government should not be forcing everybody into an electric car, it needs to be done over a more gradual period. However, I don't think the video was very balanced, I don't think he fact checked it very well, but Mark, I think you're an excellent YouTuber, I do love your channel, but I just wanted to put another point of view from an electric car user against some of the things that you claimed which I don't think were very correct. So I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, like I say go look at Mark's video, I'll put the link in the description. I hope you found it interesting, if you did please give me a like, please give me a subscribe and I'll see you on the next video, thanks for watching.